Right, today we're going to attempt to uh, change the processor on a Dell Inspiron All-in-One 2320. We've removed all the screws and all you need to do is just clip the cover off. Now you need to remove the stand to be able to get into the screws to remove the bottom cover. A magnetic screwdriver is obviously advisable for a lot of these jobs. Pull it down and you'll find it just clips out. Next we need to remove the bottom panel. Um, there are four screws to do this with. Take off the uh, side panel buttons. You can do this by pressing down on these and unclipping it. There's only the two in the middle there that actually have the clip. Right, the next thing we have to do is remove the silver shield to get to the uh, motherboard which sits on this side of the machine. And I'll count the uh, screws because I'm not really sure how many there are with this but I've got a feeling it's six. It's four so far. Right now, as I remove this, um, I'll show you that on the top of my cover, um, holes are being drilled along the top edge to allow airflow because it, in this position when heat rises this way in the machine from the graphics card the heat gets trapped in this top area and can't actually flow out of the machine through the top vents on the plastic cover and so holes were actually drilled to uh, to allow it to do this um, what I did find after drilling these holes that would probably drop the heat inside the machine maybe two degrees which was not a great advantage but it was enough at that point. And then basically print it out and place the screws on the photo as you disassemble the all-in-one. Then you'll actually know when you come to put it together exactly where those screws came from. Before we start removing the processor we have to remove the uh, the mount in the back. Simply done by removing the six screws for it and I did say six, I only removed five. I'm just lifting it out of the way. Right, 
Now we can remove the uh, the heatsink and fan. Um, there are three screws holding the fan area down. A further fourth along this top heatsink. And then if we move to the actual CPU itself, these four screws can be brought up and you'll hear them click as they reach the top. That frees up the It's in confirm. And then because we're only replacing the processor, there's no point in removing the wires etc for the fan. You might as well just move it to one side and uh, gain access to the processor itself. Okay, let's remove the old processor. Right, okay, what I'm inserting is a i5 2500K. Um, it's come out of a working machine, so I know it's, it's, uh, it's working. And therefore, I don't need to really uh, worry about it being faulty from it from the start. Um, What I'm trying to prove with this basically is that the uh, the BIOS since the upgrade can take a greater processor than uh, than has actually been put in it before, um, and hopefully therefore improve the speed and longevity of the machine. The uh, machine obviously needs to be reassembled in reverse um, there are really no special um, differences to the way that it was um, disassembled so I'm not going to video myself uh, redoing it. The next time you'll see it, um, the processor will be in, and I'll show you some screenshots of uh, how well it's doing. Right, okay, the processor's in. Um, it did boot up, asked me whether I wanted to uh, reboot, so I did. Um, I think at that point it was actually finding the graphics card. Um, what I've got here is System Monitor 2, which I'm going to blow up nice and big so that we can... Uh... Okay, um, what we're looking at now is uh, System Monitor 2. Um, if the icons would get out of the way, you can see that um, there's 8 gig in this rig. Um, down here as we get to the information you can see that we have an i5 2500k with a base speed of 3.3 uh, capable of a turbo obviously up to 3.7 um, rigs currently running quite cool um, the reason for this is going to be that there is uh, nothing in it as far as um, cover goes on the, on the back etc you know you've still got the shield off and, and all the rest because uh, I haven't fully reassembled it I just wanted to uh, have a quick test to see whether the um, processor would respond properly within the machine it seems to everything seems to be working quite fine um, I'll just give you a quick look at the graphics card change right 
Right, here we have the um, the Intel graphics data and if I pop down to uh, options and support click on that go to information center I'm on information center and I'll just zoom in so that we can see the difference the difference that you should be able to see here is that the Intel graphics card has moved from the uh, Intel HD graphics 2000 and is now the new 3000 which is supported by the i5 chip right so let's have a look at what we've got now um, here we've got the uh, the Windows um, experience index which shows that we're scoring 7.1 on the processor and 5.2 on the graphics card as we flip over to the Windows Experience Index on the new processor you'll notice that calculations have gone up to 7.5 and desktop performance has risen quite a lot to 6.6 .6 you'll also notice that for some reason memory operations per second have risen to 7.6 and that's obviously the better um, integration with the processor whether that's bus speed um, I'm not quite sure but it's obviously allowing it to do a lot more memory operations per second due to the speed of the machine uh, one of the goals with this was to actually show that you could achieve uh, a faster machine by putting in a processor that wasn't necessarily um, one that Dell would have put in. The only thing I would say is that I believe Turbo Boost is turned off in the BIOS. Um, whether they'll release a BIOS that allows Turbo to be used. Um, They've obviously used Turbo Boost in the new 2330, but I don't believe that it's available on this system. Um, I'm hoping that eventually it would come out, but I mean, Dell are famous for restricting what's done within the BIOS. Um, I hope this has been of some use to you, and it may show you that you can put quite a number of processors in. If anybody actually does put another processor in that's not... Um, one that Dell puts in, could they possibly make a comment on which process they've put in and, and what it's done? Thank you very much.